I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you again spending time with us. Well, last time we visited with a Nathan Doubleday, and uh, Nathan had more to tell us and more to share, and I was excited because I think there were some things that he hadn't uh, told us yet, and so uh, we've invited him back to finish up his story. So thanks, Nathan. And Thank you. Just as a recap, uh, Nathan was uh, born to a convert parent and um, ended up being a very uh, diligent young man, Eagle Scout, and ironic priesthood, went uh, to uh, Taiwan on a mission and ended up marrying in the temple, graduated from BYU in math. Mm -hmm. mm. That's true. I had a struggle with math. And uh, anyway, just had an interesting, he was diligent, I guess, for many years in the church. And did you serve in other callings? Did you have some for young men at all? Or did you um, ever yeah, teach, I wasn't teach gospel really, doctrine or anything like that? Not really. I think uh, when, I get, when I got off my mission, I was actually, I had three callings. I was the uh, blazer teacher, the assistant Small scout. ward. <laughs> yeah, the assistant scout master and the uh, membership clerk. Oh, were you? Yes, I had three callings. Well, really they kept busy. me busy. Sometimes it's almost a part-time job, if not full-time, isn't it? Oh, with, yeah, With yeah. the church, yeah. Yep. And so you were uh, approximately nine years married yeah. and, and children? Yeah. yeah, I have two children. Uh, my son is uh, not 18, okay. and he's actually on an LDS mission. Oh, is he really? <laughs> yeah. Where is he serving? Uh, he's serving Santa Rosa right now. California. Yeah, he's been out there about six months maybe now. Yeah. What did they think of Dad? When, what did you? Now, you were divorced when you finally kind of came went to Christian churches and that kind of thing. Yeah, it was actually you, during the separation. Well, I you know. was, I started, um, I think I started looking at other, you know, just reading a lot and, and, and just visiting other churches. I, you know, just kind of a, I think it's just a good idea, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when I was separated or maybe not even separated. I think we were just, uh, uh, just near the end of my marriage that I started did the investigating kids, Did you things. talk to the kids at all or did, they, oh, they were they, aware that you... Oh, they were really, really young at the time. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my son, I mean, my daughter wasn't even born uh, when, when I started looking, oh, okay. li looking around okay. and uh, just uh, doing research and studying and visiting stuff. Okay. Yeah. Going to Al-Anon. Yeah. And so you kind of come along and uh, you were just getting ready to tell us or share with us maybe a little bit about uh, your experiences or whatever with Sean McCraney. Right. So, so I was... left off. I left off when I, I was going to that Mind of Christ Bible study, uh, single adult Bible study, and at this Methodist and church. And had that dance with that young yeah. lady. Yeah. So I should... met the girl to dance because, uh, you know, uh, being LDS in a, it was, she was very isolated too. And so she would cope by actually going to another church's single adult wow. stuff. Yeah. Now, did you ever end up getting... Uh, we dated, um, we dated, but then I came back to Utah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was only out for nine months and I missed my kids really bad. And, and I was just working at call centers and this was with your brother. He invited yeah. Yeah. I only stayed with him for a month. I actually oh, moved okay. down to Orlando trying to find some kind of decent job. Yeah. 
Um, now, just curious, you hadn't heard of the Wilders at this point, had you, Mike? Wilder? Yeah, that's so funny. I, I didn't know anything about them, but it, I, it was about that time frame, I think. Yeah. And uh, so, um, yeah. And so, what I was doing was there. I would go to. Uh, I would drive all the way. I was living in like Lake Mary. I drive all the way across town to the other side of Orlando to go to this Methodist church's Bible study, attend their church, and I'd stop at another church, check out that one in downtown Orlando. And then I'd go over to my ward in um, Stanford. Oh, my goodness. Or Sanford, Sanford, Florida, Sanford. yeah. So I was literally doing that. <coughs> I was Excuse going me. To, I was still going to the LDS church, but I was also going to Christian churches at the same time. And I did that for like three years. Wow. Oh, yeah. my goodness, really. Yeah. Did you sense a difference in the message? Oh, yeah. I um, I was questioning a lot, but, man, I... Um, but you were I, trying I, to always, hold on to the Mormon... Yeah, I, I was always a... I always, you know, I mean, I think people who grew up in it, I mean, it literally is like um, it's just such a, it's like going into a foreign country. It's the only thing leaving. you know. Yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, it's, it's very difficult. I, I can't imagine uh, yeah. how hard it would be. I mean, I can't imagine. It. It's just such a, such a hard thing to do to leave. Yeah something that you grew up with, you know, it really is. I, I, guess I, 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 imagine, I can imagine a Muslim trying to leave. It's that similar, yeah. you know, thing. It's just so, the habits, you know, and all yeah. that, you know. So, well, it's your culture, your tradition, your music, yeah. it's everything. Yeah. So you come back to Utah. The lingo, the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah the vernacular. Yeah, so, so I was there for nine months. It didn't work out, and I came back. Uh, that same guy that played the guitar, he uh, helped me out and let me stay with him for a month while I got situated. Then he, uh, then I went, found an apartment in Sandy, and I was working at another call center in in in, uh, in uh, let's see, well in, Sa in Salt Lake, West Valley, you know, and bouncing around, still trying to get back into my career. So um, so what happened was was I was still kind of attending a Christian church in the morning because the LDS church didn't start till one. You know, I could go to the one o'clock church and still yeah. there. I was working with my bishop and I was just about ready to uh, go back in. He, well, I was working with the bishop and uh, at the, in, in Fort Union, a church there, a single adult ward. And thinking and, I'm just going to get back into yeah, it and do was, it right. I'm going to get so back to into it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, get, you know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't have my temple recommend and stuff, uh, and wasn't paying a full tithe, you know, so I kind of, I still was going to church, but I was, you know, kind of dipping away, you know, a little right, bit. Right. So anyway, um, at that time, I was flipping through the stations, and I was thinking about going back in, right? I was going to give it up my all again, and I was, uh, was flipping through, happened upon Channel 20, Heart of the Matter, and they announced, um, I started watching the show, and then a couple weeks later, they announced this heart in the park, Right in, in uh, Sugar House Park, and I and I noticed that that the guy. This is what around 08 or. On, no, this is. 06, uh, 07? I think this is two six oh six. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and so what happened was is I I saw that he had written a book called Born Again Mormon, and I thought that he was a Mormon who was born again. I go, oh, that's what I am, right? So. Uh, I was excited. Did you sense that, that you were born again then? Yeah. At this yeah. point? Oh, oh, yeah. I felt like I was born again. So that re resonated. Yeah. So did you get the book? Well, yeah. Well, what happened was, was I, I, I actually called into the show, um, <laughs> and, uh, and then he, they announced this Heart in the Park, and so I, I decided I'm going to go, and I happened to have my kids that weekend, so I, I took them, and I went to the, this Heart in the Park thinking that I was going to be seeing all these LDS people who were born-again Mormons. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, I mean, I have a very uh, creative mind, and I was like thinking, I, I, I'm I, going to see a regional rep there. Maybe I'll see L. Tom Perry there. People, born, that, Mormons that are born again. Yeah, Mormons that are born again. That's what I, <laughs> I was hoping I'd see that, right? So I get there, and I'm sitting there as they do their little presentation, and I'm asking people to the left of me, and people to the right of me and they know we're not LDS, you're, we're not, not, I'm not LDS, I'm just here because I sympathize with the ministry and I want to learn how to reach out to my LDS neighbors. So most of the people there were sympathetic Christians trying to learn how to deal with to, Mormons. To, yeah, and, to yeah. deal with Mormons. Yeah. To, uh, and so um, I'm working with, uh, I, I didn't really talk to Sean McCraney because he was, everybody's flocking around him and then uh, 
but I did talk to one of his uh, associate pastors, Kevin Kennington, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he, I kept going back and asking him questions, and then um, he finally just said, you know, Nathan. Questions about Christianity, Mormonism? Yeah, qu or? questions about <clears throat> what is it that, um, you know, what's bad about Mormonism? What's good about Christianity? How does it work? And he finally said, um, well, Nathan, what did Jesus say on the cross? And I go, well, he, said, he says, what else did he say? And I go, well, says, uh, it, he said, it's finished, Nathan. So why are you still working? <laughs> and then, and Did that kind of strike you? That struck me, yeah. That yeah. struck me, and I'm driving home, and I, I'm taking my kids home. It's about 9 o'clock at night. It's, it's getting dark. It's, and so I, I said to myself that, okay, Jesus, I kind of said a prayer out loud. I said, Jesus, I am going to believe that you finished the work. I am going to put all my eggs in your basket, basically. And that's when I stopped going to the LDS that's church. It's a profession of faith. Uh, yeah, that that's is. when I really said, I am putting, I'm laying it all down. And yeah. I am just coming to you, Jesus. Trust I'm, Jesus. Trust Jesus. And that's literally when I, that's the, the, the decanter line <laughs> of me not being an LDS person anymore. Did you sense a freedom by even saying that? Or all of a sudden you're just, you know, I don't have to work like that. Well, I, I think for me it was, um, you know, there's still a lot of questions. I, I know that uh, back then Sean McCraney was sending people who were leaving uh, LDS to a guy in, uh, named Travis Mitchell at a church called Sandy Ridge, right? Mm -hmm. And so I actually took Sean McCraney's advice and started going to Sandy Ridge oh, and, okay. and, and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to tell you it was, uh, you know, it, 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 it's been a journey, you know, it's been a learning experience. Yeah. I've had to mature right. a lot, you know, because well, I think we all do. Yeah, for because sure. there's so many things that um, are there for you being being in a, a nice, well oiled system like the LDS church, like going there. Um, it was I was the only single person that was my age and that was kind of difficult. Yeah. And uh, and and I actually, you know, and there's just not. You just go to church, and, and, you know, you have these seeker friendly type churches, and then you, where they just have a, a one hour service, then everybody leaves, right? Well, as a person that wants to socialize, there's not a lot of time to socialize, right? So there's those challenges still, you know, it's not, it's not like it's a uh, utopian. Yeah, it's a different, yeah, uh, different and, and, and it, But I think it's a worthwhile thing, obviously, yeah. because uh, yeah. I believe, you know, I take Jesus at his word, you know, he's the son of God. Did you ever so. uh, get the book? Did you ever get Born Again Mormon? Oh, yeah. I got the book. I had Sean McCraney sign it. Yeah. Did I you, actually, re yeah. you read it? And... Yeah, I read it. I actually read another one of his books, too. Um, it's about, uh, that I really like, just recent one. It's it's the one about um, if my, if, if, if my disciples were of this world, then they would fight or something like that. You know, did you know what that book is? If my kingdom were of this world. Yeah. Or, uh, if my kingdom were of this world. My servants would fight. My servants would fight. Okay. Well, I just read that one, too, and I, yeah. I, I really appreciated what he was saying, you know, yeah. that we, as Christians, we shouldn't be using worldly tools to fight our battles. Yeah. We need to go about it differently. I think it's so funny that you yeah. would expect to see a bunch of Mormons there that are born again. Yeah, I know They that. just don't, we don't use that terminology at all in Mormonism that I'm a born again, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a follower of Christ. We just don't use that terminology. Right. I mean, who the LDS doesn't or yeah, Christians don't? Yeah, the LDS don't. don't. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, what's funny, I had a scoutmaster when I was, uh, uh, you know, I was like a senior in high school, and he got up and he just literally cried and said, I believe Jesus is my Savior, you know? And, and, and so I always thought, wow, you know? Yeah, but it's just so funny that I, I think the issue with a lot of Mormons is that we have this whole... Um, background of uh, of inertia of all these Christian people before us, right? Like, I mean, my grandparents, my great grandparents. I mean, Mormons and, before us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, most converts um, are coming into LDS oh, faith see, with, the with this inertia of Christianity from their backgrounds, and so you go into Mormonism, and then it just gets all mixed together in a big mixer. And so you wind up with all these different 
flavors yeah. and things. And, 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 and I legitimately thought, wow, my scoutmaster, I think he really believes yeah, Jesus. that Jesus is his savior. Yeah. Maybe he's born again, looking back now. But um, who knows, you know? Um, well, don't you, know? you think that what you're talking about, too, that's what some, in some ways, that's what the Book of Mormon appeals to the Christian audience because it is basically Christian in many ways. Of course, there are things that are, are non-Christian, but there's very little Mormonism in the Book exactly. of Mormon. Yeah. I mean, there's no three degrees of glory and you can become a god and marriage for time and all eternity. Those things aren't there, but they do appeal to a Christian audience because they they believe in those in Jesus and yeah that's a good point I, I think for um, I think for me um, I'll never go back to being a Mormon because I believe God is powerful enough to take care of the Bible you know he left it intact the Dead Sea Scrolls prove that a lot in a lot yeah. of ways and so reading it in truth and love gives me spiritual nourishment gives me uh, guidance renews my mind, and as long as uh, you know, so so e d despite the fact that I don't have, um, you know, I'm still looking for a home church. You know, I mean, I go to church every Sunday, but I do. I'm one of those guys different that do, places. Yeah, uh, I could do a lot of church hopping. The right, right. Yeah, spots. yeah. I'm, you know, and, and that's a freedom that we it's have. It's a total to freedom. Do that. Yeah. it is total freedom, and uh, nope. and I, I would just say to uh, the people out there. You know, who are looking or questioning, or anybody who is feels like something is going to destroy them, go to Christ, because Jesus will save us. Well, the Bible, you and, mentioned that a couple of times now, and and we just don't trust it as Mormons, and that's I think one of the greatest disservices Joseph Smith did mm -hmm. was that eighth article of faith, and yet it's been proven and and shown now that I've left and I'm willing to look at the Bible in, in, in as a standalone scripture. That's the other thing we talk about once in a while is that when Mormons talk about the scriptures, they're just lumping everything together. They're not really sure where it's at necessarily. It's just all there together. So, But the Bible stands alone by itself. You mentioned the Dead Sea Scrolls and um, there's certainly other artifacts and things. And yet there's nothing for the Book of Mormon <laughs> right. to support it. Oh yeah, and I, I totally... Um yeah, I, I think, you know, people are just going to have faith in whatever they have faith in, you know, and 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 for me, if, um, you know, but the facts, and, you know, it's, it's like what Jesus said, you know, um, believe in a prophet, get a prophet's reward, believe in a in a in a good in a good man, get a good man's reward, but believe in the son of God, get the son of God reward. I, I'm probably messing that up a little bit but for me it's like yeah people are going to believe whatever they want to believe and and even Jesus says I've got sheep that are uh, I know that not everybody's going to hear my voice you know there's going to be people I'm allowing them to do that and so I, I think that's um, you know it, it, I kind of look at it like I can't change <laughs> the Mormon thing you know all I can do is say hey this is what works for me and uh, and what works for me is is believing the Bible, and, and reading it in truth and love. Now you're supporting them, supporting your son on a mission. Are no, you expect well, I, I well, mean financially, but I mean you're supporting him in the sense of he's out there and you're communicating. And I I, don't, I assume you're not screaming at him and telling him he shouldn't have gone. No, no, I, I actually didn't want them to get baptized until they were. Um, 18. Old enough to decide. Yeah, for old themselves. enough to decide. And then uh, I kind of got some pressure, and so I went and talked to a pastor, uh, and he said, "Well, go ahead and let him get baptized. Otherwise, they'll be so resentful when they turn 18, and they'll never." So they got baptized. Yeah, so they eight. got baptized. Uh, yeah. I think my son got baptized when he was like 12, and my oh. daughter when she was eight, yeah, or 10 or something. But yeah. Or maybe he was ten and she was eight. I can't remember. But yeah, I, I've I've had a I've I've really been through a lot of trials uh, with uh, that whole the way I was treated, you know, and stuff like that. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, gosh, you know, one thing I was thinking about your time both in at BYU and so on. You took institute classes. Were they pretty generic? Or did you ever sense that they covered any of the difficult issues that probably more so now they're covering? I would think with the Church essays and so on. Well, it's funny, you know. I um, well, first of all, they they don't call them institute; they call them religion classes because oh. they're it's private school. Be, okay. Yeah, they're just religion classes. Okay. But um, 
but yeah, I just remember taking the class. I mean, man, I, I you know, you, you, just, you just know the answers, you know, you just memorize the history, you know the answers, you feel like you, you get the quizzes right, you get the, you get an A on the, in the class. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, were you aware of some of those historians from the church that had been excommunicated or taken out of their positions because they identified some things that weren't popular, I guess, with the church? Um, were you aware of those people? Um, no, I, at the time, no. I, I think the only thing I heard about was um, when, like, there was this movement to pray to Jesus, you know, uh, to have a per I think somebody wrote a book, Have a Personal Relationship with Christ or something. Yeah. And I remember hearing th that McConkie came in and did yeah. a devotional and just totally lambasted that there? idea. No, you weren't there for that. I wasn't there for that. Yeah, I, I've heard that. And, and, and there's always this all kinds of folklore, you know, like... Um, like people, uh, you know, going to Vegas, getting married, to you know, to to mess around and then get divorced. And oh, then come and back. then come back and yeah. they, they haven't sinned because yeah, they were married. because they were technically married. You know that kind of stuff. You know all that all that folklore. You know, yeah. but other than that, yeah, yeah. All I mean, I remember my mom coming home with all kinds of stories. You know, like uh, she'd go to Relief Society and she'd come back. And say, Did you know Nathan that? Uh, somebody was flying a plane over the North Pole and they saw the clouds clear and then under the ice were the lost tribes. The, ten, the ten lost yeah, tribes. Yeah, I mean, I was hearing stories like that. I mean, it's just yeah. really mystical yeah. type things. It's like, wow, we really, really believed in all that, all that stuff, yeah. you know? But it's just the mind is such a powerful thing. Well, what would you say to the LDS people? What do you think they're, that they're missing? Um, I would say tr um, the... Please trust the Bible um, f as it's written. Read it in truth and love. I keep saying that, but um, you know, just, just uh, I, I think you know, um, if you you know, like the uh, Sermon on the Mount, right? Um, yeah. And uh, this is one thing that came out of that book that Sean McCraney wrote. You know, it really is the stages of conversion for a, a Christian. You know, you start off being poor in spirit, you know, and then you, then you, uh, then you're meek, and then you're merciful, and then you're seeking after righteousness. You know, um, and so, so, and then you're a peacemaker. You know, so, and then you get persecuted. So, uh, <laughs> I would just say. There is so much guidance in, in, and there's so much security in the Bible and in the stories, in what Jesus taught, that uh, we can just uh, trust it for all it's worth and just show how much you love Christ, the Son of God, and just throw, all your, throw your hat in the ring completely. And, one, uh, of, one of the things that we did, uh, Carla and I started reading the Bible, and we were just amazed at the scriptures that were there that we'd never really realized before yeah yeah I, I think if you read um, I know people say read John over and over again because it'll kind of break yeah break down those Is that um, testimony of Jesus yeah uh, read, read read the Gospel of John over and over again until the scales kind of drop yeah you know and uh, um, hopefully it doesn't have to take an experience like I went through where I, I literally had to be uh, poor in spirit before I finally got got my attention. So, well, let's see. I'm kind of uh, anything else you want to share? Or? Um, yeah, I just to kind of a, a message to uh, all Christians out there is uh, you know now is the time for us to to really um, really um, gird up our loins and be uh, you know. Don't use the world's tools to, um, yeah. you know, to to try to get stuff done. You know, uh, enforce the Bill of Rights in our in our lives, and if we see anything wrong, help people. You know, one stuff. thing that I was interested in, you said uh, all the Mormons or the people that you went to at Sugar House Park, and they were just Christians that wanted to learn more about Mormons. Have you noticed how many? I mean, there's so many good people who Christians who have this heart for Mormons. And I don't, I, they don't have necessarily family, but they have this desire to share the good news of Jesus and the grace and, and the Bible. And they realize that the Mormons are in a deceptive situation, in a cult or a 
you know, they're being deceived. Uh, why do you think that is? Do you, I mean, people have a heart for Mormons and trying to share, uh, share this good news with them. Yeah, I, I think that's admirable, um, you know. I, I mean, they I, come from back east, come out here to Utah and, and live. Yeah. Trying to share the... Trying to uh, help... Help Mormons. Yeah. I, I think it's admirable, and I think uh, it's a, if, if, the Holy, if God is calling them to do that, you know, please do it, please keep coming. And, yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Well, it's just interesting that people, are, I mean, we've got people on radio and others that are... Uh, the Bill McKeevers of the world and all the Eric Johnson and all those, they've never been LDS, but they, they work so hard to, to share the problems of Mormonism and the books and so on. And, and yet still the good news of, of Jesus. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think, uh, it's, uh, we need more of it in, in the right way, you know? Um, yeah, I don't think the people that, you know, go down there with the, the horns and Temple Squared... <laughs> Necessarily are, too effective. Are, yeah, are too effective. I mean, um, but, but you know, thank heavens we live in a free country where we have the rights to, yeah. to uh, worship and to preach and to share ideas and, and to uh, hopefully through just talking, uh, we'll learn what works for us. And, uh, well, I do think that there's enough people that listen, and I know that from some of the messages that we get, that people, and, and they'll hear your story and they'll relate to you. They'll, they'll assume, gee, he went, you know, graduated BYU, went on a mission and went through the temple. He must have had a testimony of the gospel. You certainly bore your testimony, I'm sure, on Fast Sunday and yeah. knew the church was true. You're trying to hang on and... Uh, to to what you thought was the truth, and yet uh, eventually the God touches our hearts and says, "Okay, now it's time." <laughs> yeah, I think God touched uh, was working with me all the way from when I was a little yeah. kid, when I was eight, all the way through just things, and then finally um, He just said, "Okay, it's time to yeah, get you, you on the." You get broken enough to yeah. to say, "Okay, I need you." Yeah. In fact, my little brother, um, he went through a similar experience that I did with the divorce and losing a job, and he passed away. And I um, have to say, it's probably he didn't. I, quite get I to, wish he would have just said, "Jesus saved me." Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he, get a chance to share that with you. I did. I was actually his roommate, and I did tell him about mm. how the gospel worked, and mm. and so I'm just hoping that maybe he he listened a little bit. Good. Yeah. Well, Nathan, thanks again. Yep. Great, uh, great story, and I appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files. Bye.